talking with Brian Protiva of ADVA, CEO of ADVA. Uh, and, and Brian, we're, we're at OFC, it's really busy, all kinds of people running around. How would you gauge the overall health of the industry? Well, I think it's uh, business as usual. We mm -hmm. had a decent 2011, I think we had some growth. I think going into 2012, we should have a little bit more growth than in 2011. Clearly there's a competitive environment, people are spending in LTE and other areas, but in general, you know, the foundation of the of the network, we believe that there will be good solid growth over the next quarters. Mm -hmm. Now, well, one of the uh, trends about optical stuff in general is the move towards packet optical, uh, which Correct. in turn lends itself to the idea of the multi layer control plane. That's something you guys worked out a bit, you've, you've been in GMPLS a lot. What, what can you tell me about what's going on there? Well, first, I guess two separate topics really, packet optical transport and also the, the control plane. ADFA has offered a control plane for many years. We have mm -hmm. hundreds of customers using our control plane. It is multi-layer today and you know, covers the wavelength, the OTN, and even an Ethernet layer. I think we're an industry leader there. And then the second point is the packet optical transport where we're approaching it with our partner Juniper. And there you add the MPLS layer. And for that specifically, it's you know interoperability of control planes using mm -hmm. You know, new standards, you and I interface, etc. So, ADFA has our own strategy on the in the transport layers, okay. and we'll combine with our partner for kind of the, the full packet optical okay. transport. Okay, for the solution. further up there, packet kind of layers. Correct. Correct. Okay. You know, people are talking now about uh, sort of software-defined modulation, about being able to change the modulation scheme and trade off uh, uh, the distance for performance, that kind of thing. What, how would that affect things uh, as far as the control plane and the, the management aspect goes? Well, clearly that makes the network even more complicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. For, you know, protection, restoration, and a number of other reasons. And therefore, I think, you know, control plane is here today uh, and being used by many customers, but bottom line is where the industry is going, it's going to be a necessity. And mm -hmm. today, I think there are few companies that actually have a, a rock solid control plane. I think, you know, of the okay. 10, 11, 12 companies in our space, it's probably half of them have a viable solution and two, three have really you know, modern, scalable, and capable control planes to actually go and support the direction that industry is taking with software-defined optics. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of vibe are you getting for your customers as far as, as the network gets more flexible, it gets more, more of these mixing of layers, is it getting harder for them to, to, to manage things? I know you sell control planes and, and your job is to make it easier, but I'm wondering how they're coping. Are they keeping up with, with what they ought to be able to do with the network? Well. Fundamentally today, it's, it's actually horizontalized. So, okay. you know, people are, have a, an approach where they're trying to simplify each layer on its own, All right. simplify the number of network elements that are needed and actually okay. scale networks. Um, so, you know, that's where we are today. As they go multi-layer, their expectations are to simplify their network dramatically once again, one software framework, you know, an integrated control plane from end to end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ease of, of installation, uh, the ease of working with only one partner versus multiple partners. So okay. the carrier's expectation is that they move from the horizontal to the multi-layer, it will simplify their network. All right. I guess the other trend that is actually kind of counter to that is that you know, at times some of those carriers are worried that they'll have less pricing pressure because it is all integrated and they can't horizontalize and go after mm -hmm. the, the, the cost section. So I guess. You know, long answer, but it, you, know, you know, brought together is carriers want to simplify, but cost is a big issue, and we're yeah. going to see where that all goes. Okay. I should ask you about 100 gig, the, the metro uh, version of 100 gig, uh, the, the non-coherent, uh, uh, lower cost version. How, how, how is that market developing? Uh, really interesting. First of all, ADVA has a 100 gig metro, which you know, direct modulation, uh, very low cost, uh, you know, a third of the the power, you know needs of a coherent solution and um, it's actually priced in at less than 10 by 10 G's today. Okay. So we have that available. We also just go in general available availability with our coherent solution. So we have both solution sets. Mm -hmm. We see interesting markets both segments but actually see the volumes being much greater in the metro piece. All right. Um, you know for data center interconnectivity, um, lots of enterprises that need better spectral density and their in their limited fiber infrastructure, um, and we're actually uncovering a number of carriers that actually want to use that technology even in the metro. So okay. it's been a big success for us. Um, you know, 
looks like ADFA is a leader. We have some patents around that technology. We came to market early and we're starting to ship here and feel very comfortable with what's happening in the 100G Metro and that technology. Okay, okay. Now, the, 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 the criticism that some people have about the idea of a, a 100G direct attack Metro solution is that it, it, it's fragmentation, right? The beauty of the 100G coherent was that it had one solution that everyone was going to pursue. Uh, do you sense fragmentation coming in as we look at these, these Metro alternatives? Yeah, I mean, I think the industry, though, it's, it's going to be won by the best solution at the right cost. I mean, okay. uh, fundamentally, transport's all about, you know, transporting a bit at the at the appropriate cost across mm -hmm. the network. So, um, standards are good. Honestly, though, you know, the the leader in the technology was Nortel. You know, now Sienna. That's mm -hmm. that's not an industry standard. They're using two wavelengths. Okay. So. There are a number of solutions out there. Um, I think there'll be a number of winners based on performance and, and pricing. And long term, I think the standards can have a, a big play as coherent comes down in price, as you know, new technology CFP2 modules are built for metro types of applications, but based on coherent technology. And maybe you know coherent solutions win multiple different market segments and kind of bring the industry back together. But in the meantime, Reality is again a, a third of the price, you know, a yeah. quarter of the of the power that needs to be dissipated, and it's just much easier to to offer our 100 gig metro solution to certain applications than to a, than a coherent solution. Right, right, great. Well, Brian, thanks very much. Thank you for your time and as well.